I know it, but where are my seats? I'm so fast. Where, where are my seats? This is my 750 horsepower SQ5. And today, in the quest for a nine second quarter mile time, we're gonna be installing the most insane intercooler I've ever seen in my entire life. Of course, Audi never actually designed these SQ5s to run low 10 second quarter mile times or really do anything I've done so far with my wife's daily driver, but that definitely didn't stop me. I've already spent over $20,000 in mods on this two and a quarter ton boat of an SUV. Those $20,000 definitely got me somewhere and that was into the low 10s. This car went at 10-1 in the quarter mile, which is absolutely insane for an SUV. Now this right here is a TT810, which helped me put down over 650 wheel horsepower on 034's tune last time I was on the dyno jet. Today, I think we have a couple things I wanna upgrade. Starting first with this intercooler that's sitting right here. As you can see, it's sitting behind the grill. It is a massive intercooler. The thing about this intercooler, however, is that it's not capable of handling that much power for continuous runs, especially when you're doing back-to-back -back pulls, whether it's street racing or drag racing. So for me, what I need to do is upgrade it. Luckily, there is a solution. And the solution is this massive, almost five inch thick of an intercooler. It's exactly 280% larger than the stock bar and plate intercooler. Now, IE doesn't have a power rating on their website, but I've been told that it will take on upwards of 1300 horsepower without missing a beat. This massive increase in cooling will help with the amount of heat these hybrid turbos produce, enabling back-to-back -back runs without worrying about ECU pulling timing due to heat soak, and essentially just keeping the charged air as cold as possible. This intake right here from Inter Engineering is beautiful. However, I would like to try something that's more open box and maybe necessarily drives more cold air into the turbo, but definitely makes more turbo sound. Another thing that we're gonna be doing today are these charge pipes right here. If you take a look at these stock ones, uh, they're not only very flimsy, they're also very small. So we're gonna be upgrading those as well to maximize the flow to the turbo. Now that we have the front bumper off, it's actually very simple from here. We gotta pull the front intercooler off to put the new one on. Also to install the thermostat and the water pump, you need to pull the entire front clip off. What that means is you gotta take off the entire radiator support. I'm not sure how it's done on the SQ5s. We're gonna find out in about a couple seconds here, but that will uh, enable us to have space to work behind the radiator support. So to pull those old charge pipes off. Also, we're gonna have to remove the intake and turbo inlet to make sure that we have room for everything. Let's get right to it. Before I can install the new parts, gotta remove the old stuff first. I disconnected the OEM intercooler piping clamps, then removed the two upper screws holding the intercooler to the radiator support and it came off like a breeze. Next up was the carbon fiber intake, which is basically held on by this one hose clamp to the turbo inlet. Just look at this beautiful carbon fiber intake glistering in the sun. I installed some longer radiator support bolts to be able to support it once I pulled the radiator support forward. The turbo inlets on these B9s also suck to take off or install. However, with some elbow grease, anything is possible. Turbo inlet comes off like butter to reveal the gorgeous turbine of the TT810 turbo. Dang, that looks good. <laughs> well, it's been like 30,000 miles on it. Dude, that is clean. Ooh. Filters are working, bro. Everything is perfect. Dude, that that's is a awesome. TTA 10 that was built properly and actually puts in the work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> to remove the charge pipe on the driver's side, I just needed to remove the hose clamp that holds it to the throttle body and that's all it takes to take it off. Now the passenger side is a little bit more tricky to fish out, but of course with some finagling, it came right out. Can you believe what I've been running 30 pounds of boost through? This is insane. The Audi put these kind of charge pipes on this kind of car, man. Granted, they didn't think it was gonna be running that much power through it, but it's garbage. Before proceeding with the removal of any maintenance items, I need to drain the coolant out first. There's a provision for that on the passenger side radiator hose. Once the coolant was all drained, just a few T30s and out comes the water pump and then the thermostat. Now that the teardown was completed, well guys, that's it. We got everything removed off the car. Let me show you how much parts are actually on the table here. 
we're looking at the old charge pipes were, which are absolutely nimble and definitely belong in the garbage. Next up is this integrated engineering intake that I've removed. Uh, we're gonna be going with another option. I'll show you guys in just a second here. Uh, also the IE turbo inlet, we have to take off either way to remove the charge pipes. Now the water pump is out and also the thermostat. These haven't failed for me yet, but they're a common failure point on the V9s. And I'm a person that while we're there, we might as well get it done. Of course, the integrated engineering intercooler here has served me quite well. And it's running a 10 one in the quarter mile, so pretty good. But it's time that it gets upgraded. So let me show you guys what I have. Well guys, I have so many parts on the table, I can't even fit it on my little table here, but I'm gonna show you everything that I can. We're gonna start with this big bad boy intercooler here from Integrated Engineering. It's a brand new product from them. It's called the IE Race Cooler. This thing's an absolute monster. Standing at 16 and a half inches tall, four and a half inches thick. It's gonna be something that we need for proper cooling for the TT A10 and upper power levels. So it's gonna handle everything that the V9 will ever make in the first place. Going forward, we have this S34 intake from 034 now at the time of this video. This is just a prototype. This is one of a one. By the time you guys are watching this, it's probably gonna be live and the link will be down in the description below. Now it does come with a five inch filter, which is absolutely massive. And man, this thing is gonna gulp some air for me. I'm also gonna be pairing this up with the 034 inlet. I believe it's the same size as the integrated engineering one, so I won't be losing anything. It basically has to be installed in order for this intake to fit properly. We also have upgraded charge pipes from integrated engineering. Now these are required to run the integrated engineering race cooler. They're gonna provide you with a lot better flow. The stock ones are flimsy, nimble, and probably gonna break at some point. I'm pushing 33 pounds of boost to this car and it's still holding together, that's crazy, but we definitely want more flow. So the stock ones are 63 millimeters. These are 67 millimeters. They're aluminum, alu al aluminum, aluminum? <laughs> Close enough, doesn't matter. They're gonna be more than plenty to provide uh, more flow for the turbo and also pair up perfectly with the race cooler. Last thing on the list is this thermostat from Audi and also the water pump that we have here. This kit is, is from FCP Girl. You can go down in the description below and buy yourself one. With all that said, you guys, we're gonna get all these parts thrown on to get into those nine second quarter mile times. Let's get right to it. You know, it should be called the uh, Audi bent over position. <laughs> You're always bent over, your breaking your back, yep. Well, now that we have the water pump and the thermostat changed out, I wanna make sure that we refill the cooling system. That way I know that nothing is leaking. So let's do that first. Installing the charge pipes was quite simple. I came down to playing with the fitment as there is only one way they actually fit properly. Of course, can't forget to tighten the clamps down to ensure that I don't have any boost leaks. Man, do the charge pipes look good. They also feel good. I'm sure they're gonna flow a lot better in the first place. All of that done, we got everything buttoned up. The next step is the turbo inlet and the intake that I'm super excited about. Let's get to installing it. The other cool thing with the 034 inlet, there's a little notch at the bottom so you're able to just screw the bolt in and then this goes right on top. key to installing everything correctly is double checking things, which I suck at doing sometimes. Look at that, I missed a couple bolts. Now it's installed. The great part is it does pair up very nicely with their invite and it looks amazing and it's definitely gonna sound amazing in my opinion as well. We're definitely gonna get more turbo noises at least I'm hoping for that. <laughs> With the last thing on the list, it's time for us to install the world's biggest B9 S4, S5, or SQ5 intercooler. This is basically what your stock one looks like. This is you. This intercooler right here is basically the next upgrade. It will support up to 750 horsepower. In my opinion, it's the best intercooler on the market. It comes with Integrated Engineering's FDS technology. Now, this is big chungus. 
This is the guy that she tells you not to worry about. This is the guy that might come over. No, I'm kidding. This is as good as it gets. This is as good as it's ever gonna get. Like I said, it's gonna probably support upwards of 13 to 1400 horsepower, which is more than this platform will probably ever make. You're making so much power and therefore you're making more heat. So why not go with something even bigger? This bad boy is four and a half inches thick, 16 and a half inches tall. It's an absolute monster. And once we get into my car, paired up with those charge pipes, this intercooler is definitely gonna keep the turbo a lot colder. With all that said, guys, let's get it on the car. Now, what I've decided to do is put the intercooler up against the frame rail and mark out where I need my brackets to be. And so I was thinking about self tappers, but I think I'm gonna go and do the right thing drill some holes and put some threaded inserts in. Which I've never done before, but there's a first time for everything. Oh yeah. These are these little tabs we run. o'clock on a Saturday and we got everything wrapped up. I'm super excited. The reason for the rush is because I'm going to Pacific Waterland tomorrow. Now I'm not going to start up the car because it's 1030 at night and my neighbors are going to get mad at me, but you guys are going to have to stick around and find out what the car feels like, sounds like, and definitely looks like. Uh, I kind of hope the bumper fits over this big intercooler as well. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I haven't tried that yet. However, stick around. See you in the nines. Next one is the best one. Take it easy.